So today we are going to start with electronic devices and circuits. So this is how the weightage of the EDC has been in the last 10 years. So weightage wise it is an extremely important subject. First we are going to see the semiconductor physics. Basically electronic devices and circuits majorly revolves around the physics part just like your electromagnetics. So you are going to learn about semiconductor physics. Then we will come to PN junction diode and special diodes, bipolar junction transistors, junction field effect transistors, metal oxide semiconductors, IC fabrication. So in these chapters we will emphasize more on the first and second chapter. We will emphasize more on first and second chapter because weightage wise it is going to have more than 50% of weightage. BJT because you have learned already in analog electronics we will limit it to 1 hour whatever dedicatedly we have to learn as part of EDC because you have I believe you have solved so many problems on BJT so I don't think we have to discuss so much on BJTs and then we will see junction field effect transistors it is also of one of the less weightage chapters Okay, and then we'll come to metal oxide semiconductors, which is also very important. So we'll once again emphasize more on metal oxide semiconductors and IC fabrication and CMOS technology. You will be provided notes. Okay, because it is only theoretical in nature. There is no fun in discussing it. So the notes will be provided for you for this particular part. So we are going to discuss more on first, second, and fifth chapter. And rest we will see for some amount of time. Okay, we will briefly see the other chapters, but our emphasis majorly is going to be on first, second, and fifth chapters. Okay, so we will start with as you have said, the material that we use for electronic devices is semiconductor physics. Now, reference books this is one of the best books that you can find on electronic devices both for analog electronics and for electronic devices and circuits you are going to have you are going to study about in the same particular book integrated electronics by jacob milkman hakias and then this is book is completely revolved on the device physics so the physics and material science part of it of electronic devices is covered very well in the solid state devices but I think you should focus more on this particular book because whatever book that we have, it is a derived form of the book of Milman Hekias. This is a wonderful book that you can have. Coming to Electronic Devices and Circuits by Ball said, this is also a very good book. Good thing is that this book, it's very easy to understand. Even when compared to that of Integrated Electronics by Milman Hekias, this book is going to be very easy to understand. And that is the reason why I generally prescribe this book. So whenever you have any doubt in this particular book, you can go for Boylstead. Or in fact, you can start with Boylstead also. It's also a very good book. So we'll start with the first chapter, Semiconductor Physics. So whatever electronic devices that we have, the material that we use for fabrication is nothing but your semiconductor. Can you tell me what is a semiconductor? How are we going to define the semiconductor so generally a semiconductor is nothing but which is going to have a conductivity in between that of metals and insulators or conductors and insulators so generally you're going to have a semiconductor whose properties is nothing but an electrical conductivity is going to lie in between that of your metals or conductors and semiconductors it is called as sorry metals and insulators we are going to call it as semiconductors so, can you tell me why we go for semiconductors? Why don't we go for metals? It is taken for granted that all the metals are conductors. So, why don't we go for metals? Why we go for semiconductors? Any idea? Conductivity can be varied. Very good. So, as we are discussing, conductivity is a very important parameter. What is going to happen with the metals is that you're going to have a very good amount of conductivity. The conductivity is because of your 
charge carriers so charge carriers are the ones which are going to which is going to be the basic part of your conductivity it is only because of the charge carriers you are going to have the conductivity so the number of charge carriers present in your conductors is very very high when compared to the top of your semiconductors so the problem with the conductors or metals is that the conductivity can be varied with your temperature you can vary it with optical excitation which we are going to use in the concept called as photodiodes and we are going to use something called as doping which is nothing but adding some impurities to your conductors adding some impurities to your material in order to increase the conductivity so there are many other techniques by which you can improve your conductivity which is possible only in your semiconductors but it is not possible in your conductors because your conductors are generally going to be insensitive to this particular parameters its conductivity is so high that you cannot control the parameter called as conductivity but in case of your semiconductors because the conductivity is moderate we can definitely control the conductivity so that is the reason why this is majorly used in our electronic devices and circuits so it is only your electronics is nothing but it is not only about the flow of electrons it is about the control of the flow of electrons that you are going to see only in your semiconductors so this is the best thing that is available for for our operation in your electronic devices